Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live and uh, Danoon Institute of Biblical Research. Uh, do appreciate your support of the broadcast here. Our website, right above my head, IsraeliNewsLive.org. God lays on your heart to want to support the work we do. We do appreciate that. Our address, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Thank you. Um, anyway, uh, the pro picture, no doubt, provocative. Uh, to say the very least, the seven-headed beast on which the woman rides, uh, having ten crowns. Of course, they're not showing the crowns here, the mystery Babylon. And that's what we're going to begin to tackle a little bit tonight. I, I really wished I could have gotten all the information I wanted to put together for this. I've been working since this morning on it. Still have not been able to get everything together that I wanted to speak about on this. But... Uh, we're going we're gonna to see what we can do, though, regardless. Uh, anyway, I kind of chose this image here because I generally think of, when I'm thinking about this particular creature, I also think of Psalms uh, chapter 74. Also, we know Job speaks of Leviathan. I think of this sea creature that they talk about where it says, Thou didst break the sea in pieces by thy strength. Thou didst shatter the heads of the, literally it says dragons in Hebrew, tanim. Uh, in the waters. Thou didst crush the heads of Leviathan. And again, uh, we have right there, Roshe Leviathan. And um, there, there, that's where you have the, uh, and that's also where the Tanin comes from also. It's like part of the root of the word there. Roshe uh, Leviathan, which is a uh, sea serpent of some sort, some type of very strange creature there. And so when I'm thinking, when I'm looking at the book of Revelation, and I, and I think about this, even though we don't get the number of heads out of Leviathan from, uh, from the Old Testament, we do have the numbers written over here in the book of Revelation. So let's, let's get started right here. Revelation chapter 17, And there came out of uh, one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, And to me come hither, I will show, you, show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters. And we know later in the chapter it's going to de define that waters as people's tongues and nations with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And I'll, I'll tell you something, when it talks about those kings of the earth committing fornication, I think of situations like what we have here where you have these, um, well, that's not that case there, but you, world leaders, um, Queen of England, uh, they even claim Trump. I don't know about all that, but you know, nonetheless, these world leaders, being that they are, uh, you know, well, made famous by, as they call it, the conspiracy theories of David Icke as being reptilian or hybrids. Uh, but there may be some truth to that, and so I wouldn't want to just uh, discount that, especially when it says, "With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication," and fornication. If you've ever done any of, any deep research on other documents there, you find out that that fornication is um, having relations with a species outside of your own. And we're going to get into that even biblically tonight. So let's go right on now. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. I, I think too, when we're looking at the wine here, and there's more than just this particular passage that makes me think this, this is a, uh, this woman, this great whore, has taken control of Christianity as a whole. Uh, and maybe the doctrinal views and bringing those views uh, under one umbre umbrella. Uh, so he carried me away in the spirit of the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, this is another reason why I believe it is, it is a woman, and, and of course we know she is Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Um, but we know that she is also has the golden cup in her hand which I, to me is a perversion of the communion. 
It is, it is uh, uh, the mystery Babylon who is the mother of harlots who has come along. And of course, her daughters are the harlots. So the harlots are those systems that have come underneath her control, her domain. And one thing of having taken the cup in her hand, I believe that is where, in, in fact, if you go back to Pope uh, Francis, uh, he is the Jesuit Pope, which means he is Jewish by birth and therefore he's taken a hold of the cup and they have gotten control first through the catholic church uh in christianity and then they have uh, uh, as mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth they have continued on uh you know producing daughters you know mother of harlots um so you know, that, that will be all those systems. And I, that's not just in Christianity either. That could be, whether it be in, in the Muslim faith, which you're going to find out here in a little bit here, they actually are dragging the world's religions to one religion. And it's, not, and it's none of the three, uh, as they call it, the three monothe monotheistic religions. It's going to be something completely new. Uh, and that's what I've also noticed in this. So it goes on and says, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And this is John wondering with great admiration. But she's drunken with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Okay? Think about that just for a moment here. So obviously, as we know, when it comes to the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, uh, I mean, she is definitely guilty. Uh, and, or, or maybe I should say it this way here. Who is guilty uh, of the martyrs of Jesus to begin with? Uh, the apostles, etc. Well, it was none other than Israel themselves, right? And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of this woman and the beast that carrieth her, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast you saw was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and goes into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. You know, in a way that kind of reminds me of Satan, if you think about it, you know, he's bound, thrown into the bottomless pit. He was tempting the whole world and everything. He is not. And the next thing you know, he comes back and he is all over again. Remember, if you think about the... Um, uh, the battle of um, Gog of Magog. We know Satan is loosed from his prison to deceive the world once again. And I know there's a lot of people that believe that that battle is a battle that is over and done with, but let me do, let's just pull it up. Gog of Magog. Um, Because this battle here we have in Ezekiel chapter 38 verse 2. And then we have it over in Revelation 20 and 8. Uh, when we look at it in Revelation 20 and 8. And, I shall go out, uh, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the. Let me just pull it up like that. Well I'll tell you what. Let's just do like this. Let's make it where we got it large enough to be able to see. Alright so we jump over here to Revelation 20. And I want you to watch here. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So you see, Satan was, he is not, and he shall be, even in that context right there. Now, I know that there is a major debate over this because the word that is used in thousand years is not a literal 1,000 years. It's an undetermined amount of time that is placed on him. I personally believe this is when Jesus came, conquered him, and he was sealed at that time. And if you take that in comparison to Ezekiel 38, then it would make more sense because it's like, how can you have one before and everybody's looking oh this is, all, this is you know the devil's going to be loosed and everything back on us and everything after uh, after the millennial reign on the earth you've been ruling and reigning with christ for the last almost two thousand years he's about to be loosed now and then the script, rest of the scripture begins to line up once you start seeing you know the uh 
uh, Abaddon is opened up, the, the abyss is opened up, and Satan is loosed from that prison. All the fallen angels were in what? Imprisoned. Now, and I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, for the word of God, which they had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, nor in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not until the thousand years were finished. And this is the, this is the first resurrection. Uh, there again, we're still looking at this. This, this, he, this Greek word that is being used, but it is not a physical 1,000 years, all right? And when the 1,000 years are expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison, and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camps of the saints about the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Now, even the judgment of this, we find over in Revelation 13. When we read here. Um, and there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. Hang on. I'm actually, I think I'm in the wrong chapter here. Hang tight. Here we go right here. Um, and I beheld when he opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and in the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. The moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell into the earth as, as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Sounds just like Planet X, especially if you read that over there in the Colburn document there. Sounds exactly the same. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men, chief captains and the mighty men, every bond man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. See, so you're finding that the sixth seal actually is lining up with Revelation uh, 20. Gog and Magog, fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So that's why I believe that that's where that, see, he, he was, he is not, and yet he is. And if we could ever get over that hump of this thousand year issue there, I think it would really help a lot of you guys much better on this. Um, there's so much that could be said about that. But let's go back. The seven heads are the seven mountains of which the woman sitteth. Now, notice she is mystery Babylon the great, the mother of harlots, abominations of the earth. Now, that's easy to know who she is. All right, we are here in the Dead Sea Scrolls. And I, and I bring up the Dead Sea Scrolls because it just matches what's written in, in, in the book of Ezra. Uh, but it says, uh, the vineyard with the two species, because they are holy, but the sons of Aaron are the holiest of the holy. And you know that part of the priest and of the people mingle and they unite with each other and defile the holy seed and also their own seed with fornications. That's what the priesthood did. This is according to the book of Ezra. And there you have it right here in the Hebrew language, the actual way it was written. And that's exactly what it says. Zerah HaKodesh ve'av et zarim im ha'azanoti ki. And who did it right there? The sons of Aaron. Ve'benei ha'aron kodeshi kodeshim. And they're the holy of the holy. They're the holiest of all the holy ones. And they mingled their seed with that of those people of the lands that had committed the abominations. There is your mystery Babylon. See, because when did it, where did it happen? It actually happened in Babylon. Remember over in the book of Ezra, we read in there, doing according to their abominations. Who? Now when these things were done and the princes drew near unto me, saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands, doing according to their abominations. Even the Canaanites, the Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, Moabites, Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, and so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. 
Now, what type of mingling was that going on? Well, if you go back over to Leviticus 18, Thou shalt not give any of your seed to set them apart unto Molech. Neither shall you profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. You shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. And you shall not lie with any what? Beast. To defile yourself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is a perversion. And they're not talking about just any kind of beast here. All right, when you go to the New Testament, you start finding out it's a venomous beast. It's a reptilian. Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these the nations are defiled, which I cast out from before you. Oh, wow. What do you know? They were already defiled. See, we think about when we're reading this a lot of times, we're thinking of this as being... Uh, a beast like like a cow or donkey or a dog or whatever. No, it's not talking about that. See, the beast that, that it sends out of the bottomless pit, see, Satan himself is called a beast. Called a dragon. Everything else you can think of, right? Let's take and look at Deuteronomy 18. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass, what? Through the fire. That uses what? Divination and soothsayer, or an enchanter, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or one that consults a ghost, or familiar spirit, or a necromancer. See, they pass through the fire. Beno ub Somehow or another, they had figured out how to do that. For whosoever doeth these things is an abomination of the Lord, because of these abominations, the Lord thy God is driving them out from before you. You shall be wholehearted with the Lord your God. For these nations uh, you are to dispose, hearken unto soothsayers and unto diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God hath not suffered you to do so. And then he goes on, this is where he prophesies of Christ. A prophet will the Lord your God raise up unto you from the midst of, of, of your brethren, liken unto me, and unto him you shall hearken. Boy, now, let me tell you something right there. Take that right there. I, I, I challenge you to figure that one out right there. You figure that one out right there. Just let me highlight it again. Unto him shall you listen to. Tis Shimon. That's what it says right there. That, that's, that's loaded right there for you. I, 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 I challenge anybody to figure that one out, right? According to all that you did, desire of the Lord your God in horror in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not... Here again, the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. So instead, they had figured out a way to pass through the fire to get to those fallen angels and bring forth that bastard generation, that bunch of Nephilim. You don't believe that they're not Nephilim? Let me just show you that. Where, where, where is that at anyway? Is that Leviticus? Maybe that's Leviticus 18 where it talks about that. I forget now where that's at. And let's go to verse 33. Here we are. There you go. Right there. Visham Reinu. And there we saw. Et Nephilim. All right. Now that. Pay close attention right there. Nephilim. Now, anybody that understands Hebrew, and even if you don't understand Hebrew, you can see this as plain as day. There, there they saw, and there they saw, that's what the first two words are, or three words, literally, et ha -neflim. That is, the et is like a direct object right there, um, with the definite article, hey, in front of the word nephilim. But what's important is this little yod right there. That yod tells you that Moses spelled that word one way, but when he goes down to the next line and he spells Nephilim, there is no yod in between the Fe and the Lamed. So they saw the Nephilim. So don't try to tell me the Nephilim are not here after the flood because according to Moses, they are. And those Nephilim are the sons of Enoch, according to what it says here, Bene Enoch, sons of Enoch, and Enoch, according to what Moses wrote, was mean, which means from, 
ha nephalim. They didn't put the, 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 the rabbis did not put the vowel points correctly because he is from the fallen angels. Direct descendant. His father, which is recorded, by the way, in the Bible here somewhere, is a fallen angel. How did he get that kind of a father? Well, according to what is written over here in Leviticus and over in Deuteronomy, they're passing through the fire. Let me go back up to it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. In the wrong one. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go, right there. Okay. Benu obito be'esh. What fire, well, I wonder what fire they're talking about. You ever think about that? Now, if you notice in the prophecy about Jesus, when it talks about him, they said they don't want to see that great fire no more. The Lord thy God is going to raise up a prophet like unto 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 me, raise up, excuse me, unto you, from the midst of you, of your brethren, like unto me, and to him you shall hearken, or you shall hear, literally, tishamanu, shaman, you shall hear him. Okay? According to all that you did desire that the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let not let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And somewhere along the way, though, you was able to pass through the fire to, to Moloch. Had some enchanters pull that one off. You remember when, the, if when we read in the book of Enoch where the fallen angels are imprisoned? And it talks about those those like like long pillars of fire or whatever it was like that where they're imprisoned at. Well, you managed to get over there, didn't you? Not not you per se, but I'm just talking about these nations, the Hittites, Perzites, Jebusites, these necromancers and soothsayers and, and whatever have you more. They figured out how to get over there and pierce that veil. And then what happens? Israel comes along and some of the, it doesn't say all the priests, some of the priests and some of the people decided to go play the harlot and ended up sleeping with them and bringing forth more Nephilim that ended up amongst the children of Israel. That's why when Jesus comes along and the Pharisees are in control of everything, he called them what? What did Jesus call everybody? A bunch of serpents. Let's go back to that one too, right? Jesus, Matthew 23. In fact... Yeah, let's just, oh gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm debating on which way to do this. Hang on. Let's see here. I actually have the tears open on this one over here. Um, been trying to get one word really translated. It drove me nuts over here already. I'll come back to that a little bit later. Let's go to 23. Call no man upon the earth, Father. One is your Father who is in heaven. Hmm. Do not be called rabbi because one is your rabbi, the Messiah. The greatest among you will serve you, right? We know all this, right? We're going further down. He, then he comes to us and says, Woe to you sages and Pharisees, hypocrites, who are like whitened sepulchers which appear on the outside to be beautiful to men, but the inside are full of bones of the dead and filthy. Thus you appear on the outside to be righteous to men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Woe to you hypocrites, Pharisees, and sages. Because you build the tombs of the prophets, glorify the monuments of the righteous. You say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have permitted them to put the prophets to death. And this you bear witness against yourselves that you are the sons of those who killed the prophets. You behave according to the deeds of your fathers, he says. Serpents, seed of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of Gehenna if you do not turn in repentance? At that time, Jesus said to the crowds of Jews, Therefore, behold, I am sending you prophets, sages, and scribes. Some of them you will kill, some of them you will afflict in your synagogues, and you will pursue them from city to city in order to place upon you the blood of every righteous 
one which has been poured out upon the earth from the blood of Abel, the righteous, and to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Barkiah, from whom you kill between the temple and the altar. Truly I say to you that all these things will come upon this generation and upon Jerusalem who kills the prophets and removes those who are sent. How many times I wish to gather your children as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you would not. Therefore you will leave your house desolate. Truly I say to you, you will not see me henceforth until you say, Blessed is our Savior. Think about that. But he called them serpents, seed of vipers. Now, if you're a seed of a viper, then we're going back to Revelation, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of what? Harlots and abominations of the earth. It was considered an abominable thing according to Leviticus and Deuteronomy to do those types of things. And then, of course, like I said, in Ezra, Ezra also identifying that they had mingled themselves with the Holy Seed. And as I pointed out to you a moment ago over here in the Hebrew language in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and this is not even a, a biblical passage, they're just telling you what happened. Aaron, the holiest of the holies, the very holiest of all the holies, of the people of Israel, the sons of Aaron, and they took and mingled their seed with the seed of the people of the land. totally messing everything up, right? So, we come back to Revelation. Let me just see why I have Isaiah 7. Okay, okay, that's right, Leviathan. Okay, we'll come to that in a little bit here. So I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The angel said to me, Wherefore did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of this woman. And the beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns, the beast that you saw was and is, is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and goes into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which has wisdom, the seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. A lot of people can do different things on that. We know that Rome sits on seven hills. We know also that uh, uh, Jerusalem sits on seven hills as well. So take it either way you want to go with it, right? The ten horns which you saw are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. Oh, they're all going to throw their support behind this beast system, this ungodly system abominable kingdom. These have one mind, shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. He is the Lord of lords, king of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he says unto me, the waters which you saw where the, where the horse sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. She controls the whole earth. The whole earth, right? Now, let's take a quick look here, though. By the way, Isaiah shows she's going to, that beast is going to be judged. And that day the Lord, with his sore and great strong sword, will punish Leviathan, the slant serpent, Leviathan, the torturous serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. By the way, I did a, a video over on Patreon where I'm talking there about a war that is coming that, they, that, that, uh, that I got from a former Navy SEAL where the reptilians will be coming in from space as well as from inner earth, the seas, to wage war here on the earth. Now, according to what I was told, it would be against the greys, I guess a battle for who's going to control what's going on on the earth. Who knows? But just the thought of that and the dragon that is in the sea really kind of makes me think a little bit, right? Let's take a look at another scripture here. And we are in, that's Revelation 12. Do I want Revelation 12? Let's go with Revelation 12 first. The woman, let's see, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child, wait a minute, let's see, is that where I wanted to go? Hang on. Here we go. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns upon his heads. 
And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and then cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered to, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score days. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil. That's how you know that the devil is the dragon. He is the serpent which deceives the whole world and he cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. The accuser of our brethren is cast down, which to accuse them before God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. Remember, it spoke about that earlier. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, you that dwell in the earth. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows that he has but a short time. Does that make you think like it does me? Right there. Habiters of the earth and of the sea. By the way, if you've noticed thus far as we've talked about the inhabitants of the earth, each time... They, 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 like in over here in Revelation 17. Let's see if we we'll go back to it real quick. Um, oh, where was it at? I'm looking for the part there where the inhabitants of the earth, whose names are not written. Yeah, here we go right here. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Notice that right there? That's why I got it in green. And then we read over here, we're in, now we're over here in Revelation, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. It's not just the inhabitants of the earth, but it's also the inhabitants of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. That kind of made me wonder when I heard about this battle that's coming. Because there are, I call them fallen angels, whatever you want to call them, that are inhabiting the sea. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and a half time from the face of the serpent. Now, and the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood after the woman. He might cause her to be carried away of, of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. The earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's challenging as you read these things. But trying to figure out exactly what's coming next is what I'm looking at right now. Because I've, I feel like we are at the moment of the opening of the abyss. And I feel like that Satan is coming up. I feel like that we are at Gog of Magog um, at that timing. Now we're in Revelation chapter 13, I believe. No, chapter 6. We're getting in a little bit. We're kind of doubling back here to these seals. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was Death. Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and with what? The beast of the earth. 
That beast is the venomous beast. By the way, in the, in the Greek language, there are three different types of beasts that are mentioned. There is a tame beast. There's just a regular beast that, you know, it's got a life or whatever. But then there is a venomous beast. In this case here, it is a venomous beast. And when I'm reading this, I cannot help but wonder if this is not, I mean, because let's, let's, hey, let's face the facts. The Bible said fearful sights are going to come upon the earth that will cause man's hearts to fail for fear. Could that be those types of venomous beast? Another reason why I'm getting into this, by the way, and, and I know we're maybe I'm not doing the best job in the world putting it together. I'm looking at different angles because of some of the things that I'm hearing about that, are, that we're about to be facing, which seem nearly impossible to believe. Like I said, I put a lot of that over on Patreon, but if you looked at some of those things that I'm placing there, you may do the same thing, scratch your head and say, wow, that just sounds too crazy. But then we go in here in the Bible and it begins to really start to look not so crazy after all, right? And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given to every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also, their brethren, that should be killed as they would, should be fulfilled. Now, all right, I have, I used to totally look at this completely different, okay? And I got to throw something at my dog, get her to stop chewing on the plastic over there. Wasn't good to give her another piece of plastic to chew on. Anyway. I used to believe that this was speaking of the Jewish people. But I am actually now persuaded that when it talks about, and they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, do, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? I used to say it was the Jewish people because the Jewish people are, are you know, Christianity is taught... As Jesus said, you know, if you go with him a mile, go with him twain. If he smites you on the right cheek, give him the left cheek, etc., right? But in reality, even the believer knows that there is judgment coming, that Christ will judge the world. He will reconcile. He will recompense for the evil that has been done to the people. And truly, the martyrs of of, 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 of Jesus as we read over here in Revelation 17. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Why was John admire? He was, he saw her, but he wondered. With, I don't think that he was, it's not like an admiration of, oh, she's so wonderful. I think it's more, it's more of a shock. You're supposed to be Israel and you're drunk with the blood of the saints when this was the very Messiah that was to come. I think that's what it was for John. All right, but now remember, like I said, I'm jumping around a little bit here. See that beast that was is not and yet is. So there was martyrdom for several hundred years of the early church, the early believers, they were murdered and killed and everything else, slain and tortured. And then there went this, this, this lay down, this silence. See? There come a time where Satan, like he's bound, he's not able to up and just devour the church the way he was doing. And the church had a, a, a period of... of, of uh, a, a, a break we might say but then Satan then begins to be loosed again and as he's loosed again now we're reading over here in Revelation chapter 6 how long before you avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth you know what I find fascinating remember I highlighted for you a little scripture a moment ago and I said I really like for you to think about that one deep Here's another one to think about deep too, right? 
Let's see. Avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. Tell me how in the world are they still alive? And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, and holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Now, I don't really know what to tell you on that, but that's pretty wild because I believe this is the martyrs of Christ, like Peter, James, all these that were killed early on. The church fathers, etc., going on down, they were they were brutally murdered for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. Now, now, granted, this could be as being written in the days that John wrote that. That could be what they're talking about then, but it's still kind of weird, right? And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So we are about to come again with another slaying of Christians. And then when we talk about those Noahide laws, the seven Noahide laws that will cause you to lose your head because you blaspheme God. And I show, show you in the scripture that when Jesus, when Caiaphasus, the high priest of his day, when he said, I adjure you by the name of the living God, tell us true, are you the son of God? And all, Jesus didn't even say he was, he just said, thou sayest. He tears his garment, he says, what further witnesses do we need? You've heard his blasphemy. So I dare you, when they fully enact the Noahide laws to stand there on that day and hold that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I don't mean that in a bad way when I say I dare you. In other words, my point is, that's what I want you to do, is to stand there and hold to that. Because the thing is, yes, you may lose your head, but you won't lose your soul because God is waiting for this to happen. Because the blood of the Amorites is not full yet. And I beheld when he opened the sixth seal. Here's where it comes, though. It's got to be fulfilled. They're going to get there. We're going we're, we're to see a lot more deaths of Christians. And I behold, when I had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was an earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. The stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Remember the other day when we were reading uh, together out of the Colburn document? That's what happens. That's exactly what happens. The stars lose their course. They fall to the earth. In other words, you have asteroids, meteorites, whatever the case may be. They start pounding the earth. The heaven departed as a scroll when it's rolled together. See? That's how those, that's how those, uh, that's how those meteorites and stuff will hit the earth. It's because the heaven's going to roll back. The magnetosphere, or, 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 or whatever you call it, the mag I guess the magnetosphere is going to roll back. And then we're going to get pounded down here. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. That's a Planet X Nibiru experience if I ever heard one. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men, every bondman, every free man, hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and the rocks, Follow us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. But the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Amen and amen and amen. Now, listen, I don't want to go without looking at Daniel as well a little bit on this, right? Daniel chapter, gosh, what chapter were we in on this here? I think it's chapter 7. There we go. Daniel seems to see something very similar. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings that shall rise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. 
Then I desired to know the truth concerning the four beasts, which was diverse from all them, exceedingly terrible, whose teeth were of iron, its nails of brass, which devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. And concerning the ten horns that were on its head and the other horn which came up before which three fell, even that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things, whose appearance was greater than that of his fellows. And I behold, in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. There you go. There you go. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given for the saints of the Most High. And the time came and the saints possessed the kingdom. There is that tranquility time. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be a fourth kingdom upon the earth which shall be diverse from all the kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Mystery Babylon, the woman that rides the beast, is Israel. She is the mother of harlots because she mingled the holiest seed of Aaron with the people of the lands, with the Nephilim. which shall be diverse from all the kingdom and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And as for the ten horns out of this kingdom shall ten kings arise and another shall arise after them and he shall be diverse from the former and he shall put down three kings. Now, I have a totally different view on the three kings now than what I used to have. Okay? Vehu yeshene min hakod excuse me Kodma vetalata melachin yahashafael. He's literally going to make them fall. He's not going to put them. He's going to make them fall. He's going to make these other kings fall. I don't think anybody's ever said this before. I don't. I don't believe, and maybe they have. Who knows? I, I'm not always a guy that knows everything by no means, and I know that. I learn a lot from a lot of people, and so thank God. I thank God for comments that you guys make. Sometimes you make comments you may not even know. It. Maybe I don't get a chance to tell you that, but you inspire me to do the next thing. In fact, this message here was inspired because of a comment my wife made. I have to just be honest about it, right? He shall put down three kings. That's that one that's going to be diverse from all the former ones. He's going to put them down. He's going to put down Judaism, but I'm not talking about Talmudic Judaism. I'm talking about Karite Judaism. The Jewish people, like Nehemiah Gordon, that believe the Old Testament, that are real Jewish people. He's going to put down The Muslim faith and Muhammad is their prophet and he's going to put down Christianity. Now, when I say put them down, it's not like Christ is going to be destroyed by no means. He's the king of kings, right? We already know that. But what I believe this is, is it represents the three, what they call the monotheistic faiths. We, when we were discussing this the other day, and I don't have this in front of me to bring this back up, but if you remember, there was one of the, one of the um, writings that I quoted to you where the law, maybe I can find it, maybe. Let's just see here. Um... Let's see, here we go. Let me try to see if I can go back and find where that was. Oh, here's another one that I didn't show you either. Who keep the commandments and the seed of the wicked ones, right? There you go. There is a seed of wicked ones, right? All right, that's what not what I was, that's not the reason I'm looking for that. Let me just see if I can find it here. Oh gosh, where was that at? Uh, the spirits do not walk with them. I have no way, gosh, guys. I, maybe I can find it still. Hang on, let's see. Um, 
what I'm looking for is where it talked about the law that goes. This basically it's like they're going to bring out one law and that law is going to dominate the four quarters of the earth. I don't know if you remember that or not. I don't even remember where it was at. I don't know if it's in the Dead Sea Scrolls, if it was part of that Colburn document, what it was. Let's see. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can just find it real quick. Oh, goodness. Oh, I think this is it here. I think this is where it's at. Hang on. Let's see. Yes, maybe so. A nation of soothsayers shall rise and fall. Okay. This is what is written in the Old Testament about Israel. They called them soothsayers and they would fall because Christ would come and it would cause the fall of Israel. And their tongue shall be a speech learned. And that's what happened. In order for Israel to come back as a nation again, they were still an archaic type of, they, they had the, still had the Hebrew tongue through, through religious means, but there was no modern tongue for them in Hebrew. So they had to learn the tongue. A nation of lawgivers shall rule the earth. Here it is. There they are. And that's still Israel. They will be called a nation of lawgivers. Remember how they, they believe that the scripture has not been fulfilled, that the law comes out of Jerusalem, right? And then it, it shall rule the earth and pass away into nothingness. One worship will pass into the four quarters of the earth. There you have it right there. Talking peace and bringing war. See, one worship. I believe that right there, and that's in the Colburn document, right? But I do believe that that document right there may very well give support, and he shall put down three kings. Because they're going to, they're going to do what? Let I me mean, look at that. Look at what happens. Let me, let me blow this up so I make sure you can see this good. Right? And let's back it up. And let's blow this one up as well, right? A nation of soothsayers shall rise and fall, and their tongue shall be the speech learned. A nation of lawgivers shall rule the earth. And, there's the and, right? And, pass away into nothingness. One worship will pass into the four quarters of the earth. Talking peace and bringing war. One worship. I think the passing into the four quarters of the earth, which is kind of like they're divided up into four. But again, what does that four represent? There are four. See, what, let's go back to the scripture again. Because what did we have? You had four kings. And one was diverse from all the rest. And he shall put down three of them. Bringing his law into domination. That's what I think that is. And he shall speak words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And he shall think to change what? The seasons and the laws. Huh. I'll tell you what the seasons are. This is going to be another one for you. He shall think to change the seasons and the law. He's trying to take you back to the Old Testament law when Christ has already come and fulfilled the law. You get that now? This is why you see in the book of Hebrews so much about the law. This is why you see uh, Jesus saying, when he asked the rich young ruler, he comes to him, he said, good master, what do I do to, that I might receive eternal life? He said, thou knowest the commandments. Do not kill, do not steal. He starts to name them off and he says, I've kept these since my youth. He said, but you still lack one thing. Go and sell what you have and give it unto the poor. Another place Jesus said, the whole law hangs on to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. In these, if you do those two, you've kept the law. Because you won't commit adultery, you won't, take, you won't covet your neighbor's uh, tractor, his mule, his donkey, or anything else that he might have. Right? 
And if you love God, you're not going to you're not going to kill, murder, steal or anything else. See, it's a law written the the the, the Gentile has a law written within his heart. And it should be both Jew and Gentile. That it is a law written within our heart. We don't need to have thou shalt not. We don't need seven Noahide laws. We don't need 613 mitzvot for the Jews that you got to figure out how you're going to stand up, how you're going to brush your teeth, wash your hair, what you're going to pray, what shoe you got to put on first and have a bunch of rabbis telling you what to do. Especially when I just read to you, the scripture says, you don't call no man on this earth rabbi, you have only one and that's the Mashiach which is Jesus Christ. No other rabbi did you need. So he shall think to change the season and the law. He's changing the season by trying to, in other words, you're past the season of the law. The law had a purpose. The law served a purpose. When Christ came, he was the fulfillment of all of that. That was the season. We've passed that. When you try to change that season and put a law back in there, you're going outside. That's why the scripture says you cannot have two masters on this earth. You will either hate one or love the other. You cannot serve Jesus Christ and serve the law at the same time. I know and I know it's going to offend a lot of people that I say that. I love you. I really do. I really want you to wake up, you know. You can't serve both. And I, I, you would not believe the overwhelming amount of evidence that's written about that. Not just in the Bible. There's actually ancient documents of other biblical type documents. I don't call them biblical, but biblical type documents say the exact same thing. In fact, in one, they're quoting Jesus' very words. You can't serve two masters, and that's what they explain. They explain that it's, you can't serve the law and serve Jesus at the same time. It just doesn't work. So there you are. He shall think to change the season and the law, and they shall be given into his hand until a time, times, and a half a time. They're going to rule with those Noahide laws. That's what gives them the ability to kill you. And you know, listen, I'm going to tell you something. They're already doing it over in Ukraine. They burn the Russian Orthodox Bible. They burn, they kill the Christians over there. And, and, and no doubt, both sides are guilty. I don't say one's, one's better than the other. But who do you think's behind that persecution of Christianity? Just because they're Russian Orthodox? What, you, did, did, was, was Jesus not the same Savior for you over in the Western Ukraine? And vice versa? You're supposed to be brothers. Not kill one another. You know, let me, let me, and just in closing this here, let's, let's go to the book of Jude, just as a reminder here in closing. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. When he says this here, I gave diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. In other words, salvation had just become a common thing. And he wanted you to know, to contend, fight for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unaware. That's why it became common. Who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. The only men ever ordained to condemnation. And when I say ordained, in other words, it was predestinated they were going to be condemned, were the Nephilim. There was no mercy. ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance though you once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believe not. Watch carefully. And the angels which kept not their first estate, there it is, ordained to this condemnation. 
but left their own habitation. He hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. So therefore he's telling you that that same dynasty, so to speak, has crept in unaware. Enoch, as I showed you moments ago, over in, uh, where were we at? In the book of Numbers. Where is it? Here we go, right here. Anak. He is, B'nai Anak, the sons of Anak are Nephilim. Okay, right there, with the extra Yod. Moses spelled it that way. Argue with him. But, Anak's daddy, their grandfather is from Min Hanafalim. Change the vowels because you got it wrong. No yod. There is no yod between the fe and the lamed right there. There is none. Oh, you might put your little dagish there because you're trying to make it say what you want it to say, but that's not what Moses wrote, and you know it. So as he says here, the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, under the judgment of the great day. Now we already know that the condemnation also fell on their children through the book of Enoch. You know, and it's funny, just the other day I'm sitting there reading uh, something online and they're talking about Enoch, or maybe it was a video, and they said, well, it was not inspired word of God and everything because there's no mention nowhere in the canon. Are you nuts? It's actually written right here in the book of Jude, in fact. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to what? Fornication. What do you know? That fornication is rampant. Going after strange flesh. What does it say in Leviticus? Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is a perversion. Strange flesh. He, like I said, he ain't talking about donkeys and dogs and, and, and chickens and goats or anything like that. Hello? All right? Strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Now, this is what's really powerful. Likewise, you can take the word filthy out. It doesn't say filthy. Likewise, also, these dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Dreamers, right? Let's go back. What was it? Deuteronomy? Okay, let me find it. Uh, here we go. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. One that useth divination, a soothsayer, or an enchanter, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or that consulteth a ghost, or familiar spirit, or a necromancer. What do you know? Jude knows how they do it too. These dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beast, and those things they corrupt themselves. He's actually calling them beast. What do you know? You know what? I didn't even look at that, but let's look real quick. Jude. Let's just quickly just jump in there real quick. Jude. Only one chapter. I'll tell you what. Jude said more in one chapter than, than, than most anybody I've ever seen before. Okay. Accusation of the Lord rebuke you. Okay. These evil people, they know not what they know. Naturally, brute beast. Let's just see here. Okay. In that case there, they're just like a dumb animal. <laughs> they're not the venomous one. I was just, I was curious to see if that's what that was going to be. 
So, but he still calls them a beast. And those things, they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Korah. These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about with the winds, trees whose fruit wither without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. So he's still identifying who they are. Wandering stars. Remember those stars that were cast down into the earth. Satan drug them with his tail and brought them down to the earth. Two-thirds of the angels of heaven brought down on this earth. There was only 200 that was in the initial fall. How many more since then? Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, to convince all that are ungodly among them, all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and that is a real lust. And their mouth speaks great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of, of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These by, be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the Spirit. There you go. Mm. This is interesting. And the others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. You, you know why he says that? That, that? That's a loaded one too, by the way. Hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. That's because this is a prison. You are in a prison. God's coming to redeem your soul. Why do you think even, even if you look at the scripture where Paul said you'd be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, why would you have to be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye? Because flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. Mm. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening, putting up with me all this time. I, I hope I didn't forget. Oh, you know, I did, I did forget to mention the one, and, and maybe we do need to go back to this real quick. Um, let me find it here Hebrew Matthew and I actually I reached out to Nehemiah Gordon because I wanted to see if he could help me with one word in here uh, in fact if any of you know it I'm going to do comments on control uh, if you might know this I really would like to know but this is remember the tares in the parable that Jesus gave I like using the Hebrew Matthew here because Jesus does it in such a way in the Hebrew. And by the way, you have to understand, Shem Tob's Hebrew Matthew, he actually copied this from a Jewish man that had converted to Christianity, that had believed Jesus to be the Messiah. About That's about four or 500 years ago, I believe. Uh, so it is, it is still a very old document. And I appreciate the fact that the, it was a Jewish man that became a believer. And so he had that Hebrew document of the New Testament of the Gospel of Matthew. And it has been said that the Jews have always preserved uh, the Hebrew Matthew that Matthew had once done. Uh, we just don't have any other older ones than what we have here. I'm sure they're probably there. It's just those that do have it are not gonna turn it loose, right? Anyway, so he says right in here, Vezera al chachatim, see, and and he says, and the seed upon. See, this is where Jesus is saying here when he talks about the enemy came and he sowed over the, over the wheat itself. He sowed the tares. And so we read, he set before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man who sows good seed in his field. And it came to pass when the men were sleeping his enemy came and sowed tares over the wheat 
And I really want to know what this Beriga means. That is, Beriga and went away. Now, I have a feeling that this word is not really a Hebrew word. Um, and it has got, if you go down into this section here, and like I said, I'll just share this in closing with you. Um, The, the way it's spelled here in the actual text is Bet Resh. Uh, actually, that's not the right one either. That's, an, that's another version of spelling it. Bet Resh Yod Yod Alev Gimel Hey. But the way it is spelled in the uh, text here is right here. Okay, it is Bet Resh Yod Yod Aleph. Uh, these are not Yods here. It's kind of like to, 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 to give a pronunciation, little dashes there, Gimel Hey. So you can actually drop those two out of there when spelling it. But I believe that Jesus, I, I, the thing is, I don't know which language he's actually using. Uh, it's to me, he's not actually using the Hebrew language. He's using uh, perhaps a, another language. And he's only, whether it be Greek, uh, you know, could have been Aramaic uh, that he was using at that time. Uh, or, or I, I would think Aramaic or a Greek word that he used because those would have been the two languages at that time. But he was, he was, he's trying to express something, and you now they, they don't translate that. They said that is Bariaga and went away. And and I have a feeling it's because who really knows the true source? Uh, the closest thing I've come to is actually in Sanskrit from the Indian language. But I don't want to say. So anyway, it says, It came to pass when the herb grew up to make fruit, he saw the tares and the servants of the master of the field drew near to him and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed? Then where, where came the tares? And he said to them, The enemy did this. The servant said to him, We will uproot the tares. He said to them, No, don't do that unless you uproot the wheat. Again, it's that mingling of the seed. And I think that that, that word right there, Bariga, really is the key of knowing exactly what he was saying when he said he sowed the tares over the wheat. So I'm, I'm trying to find out that word. So I've got a lot of different people working on this for me. Uh, I asked Nehemia Gordon, maybe he might know. Uh, I've asked other uh, people that, that speak Hebrew as well, uh, seeing if I can't get an answer for this. Anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for the support of, of the work we do here. IsraeliNewsLive.org, uh, our website there. And, uh, and, and by the way, we just sent out a letter uh, through Patreon. My wife did. She wrote a little letter for those of you. There are a lot of you former patrons as well uh, that maybe are not patrons now there. But she sent out a letter just kind of giving an up, update there of, of things that she feels on her heart. And, um, but anyway, if you want to donate, you can click online, donate directly online. Uh, and uh, or uh, our website, or excuse me, our, our mailing address, P.O. Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872. Uh, and also don't forget, EMP showed. I bet you they're running another sale for, for uh, uh, July 4th coming up. Uh, they're still doing the, the Memorial Day sale, so that, that's amazing too. So definitely, uh, you know, by the way, and I'm about to do too a broadcast on the issue that happened with the Wagner Group. That was a total setup. I told you guys over two years ago, probably going back almost three years ago, that in 2024, you would see that, uh, that Putin would be coming out of power and that he would be replaced with a true hardliner. Now I'm beginning to wonder if it's not gonna be the, the leader of the Wagner Group. Uh, he really, to me, it's all set up. I'll, I'll, I'll discuss that with you guys in another broadcast. Anyway. Thank you for listening. Don't forget, if you do get uh, an EMP shield, you got to remember to apply that coupon code. So when you click on it, uh, in order to get a discount, besides the discount they're giving you, they're going to give you our discount as well. And when you do that, uh, you add that to your cart. And it doesn't matter if you added 20 of them to your cart, you'll get $50 off on every single one of them just by putting the INL50 code in there. And this is when you're going to do it right there. You put that in there, you apply that coupon, it'll knock it down another $50. And like I said, plus their discount, which in this case here was 10%, they're still doing it. 
So that's awesome that they're doing that. So I assume they're going to run that through July 4th before they take it off. And I think, I think it, and I'm being very sincere with you, I think it's time, if you haven't gotten one, I would get it for at least your car and your home. If you do have solar panels, uh, I am, I'm going to start, by God's grace, I'm going to start working on this film we did with the people at EMP Shield because a lot of very valuable information from the scientists, the engineers, uh, the people there, etc. You need to know more about this product, how it works. And we did a lot of filming with them. And I apologize too to our friends at the EMP Shield that we haven't already done this already uh, because we're in a critical time. And I really think this is a time you should invest uh, to protect your family. God bless you and thank you for listening.